Welcome everyone. So good to have everyone here. This was the semi last minute impromptu training that we probably should have given a little bit more notice to. I'm so sorry that we did not, but I'm so happy to have you all here. I'm super excited to always be talking to health councils and we will get started shortly. Oh, let me change my screen right there. My name is not Sharon, my name is Susie. Give me just one minute. Okay. Great, hi, Geraldine. Hi, let's see, who else do I see? Lori, hi, Lori. Jessica's with us, yay. Gerilyn will be helping me on the back end. Um, please uh, keep in mind that what I share today, I will be, we will be sharing with all health councils. Um, it will be easily accessible on our website. It's gonna be, go a little fast. As you all know, those who know, who know me and have heard me, I talk a little fast as it is. So it's gonna be like fast forward. And um, that's because we just have an hour, but I wanna cover everything. And um, we will save questions till the end, but please, as the presentation is going, please um, ask your questions in the chat. Okay, and if I could just, uh, first of all, welcome everyone. Um, welcome to our training, uh, sort of like a refresher course for health councils that have been reporting for a while, but maybe just need some, you know, a little bit of a um, refresher course to remember all the points because there's, it's complex. And also for all of our new health council coordinators and project coordinators, welcome. This is such important work that y'all are doing. It always has been, but right now we're in an unprecedented pandemic. And um, just think this will be your legacy that you will be helping your community to have more access to health, to healthcare. And so, okay, what I'm gonna do is um, share my screen. Please put your name and the health council that you represent in the chat. And again, ask any questions that come along as I'm giving the presentation, please feel free to um, put them in the chat and then we will have a moment to, um, for questions at the end. <clears throat> okay, so, give me just one minute. Okay, here we go. So welcome to the CDC Health Equity and Community Rebuilding snapshot of program for new health council members. Uh, please keep in mind the name of this project is CDC Health mm -hmm. and Community Rebuilding. And, um, sometimes we refer to it. Uh, and if you can please mute if you're not speaking. Thank you so much. Okay, and uh, so yes, CDC Health Equity and Community Rebuilding. Sometimes we call it the CDC um, project for, uh, as a short named, but this is the name of it. So let's get started on this uh, refresher course training for um, health councils that um, just maybe need a little bit of a reminder or are new coordinators. All right, so um, we're not going to go too much into depth here. We will be starting to see a lot of this in our trainings. We just always want to keep in mind that everything that we do when it comes to uh, reporting, helping the community, and uh, being there for our communities in terms of access to uh, public health, it always has to be um, we, we need to make sure that we have like a system, right? And so when we use models, we use them because they're proven models and they've worked in the past with other communities. And so the framework for this community-based participatory research is context, partnership, actions, and outcomes. And basically um, context is knowing, you, you better than anyone know the context of your community. You know if it's rural, you know the political landscape, you know um, the, the economic, um, uh, demographic, the social, racial, all of that. So that's important for you to know and to keep in mind as you're moving forward with your work. Also want to um, reiterate how important it is to have local and uh, partnerships such as the Department of Health and how we can work with them and the Alliance um, and all the other partners that we have. Uh, and also actions and starting to make plans. So the vaccine uh, action plan is, is an example of that. But no matter how much we plan, we need to have things that, that are outcomes that are meaningful and they have to be around health and social justice. So I just wanted to um, get you introduced to this and you will start seeing it in more of our trainings if you haven't already. Okay, and then here's the why. Um, so in 2019, 
a mandate was passed. So it's it's a law now that um, health councils um, have to fulfill certain, there's expectations laid on them now. And um, so the CDC Health Equity and Community Rebuilding Program helps you all to build capacity so that you can achieve the expectations laid out in this mandate called HB 137. When you get this, um, <coughs> you'll be able to access the bill in this link here. Okay, and so I just wanted to do a quick overview of the trainings that we have. So um, the uh, project has two trainings every month on the first and the third from one to three. You will get reminders on these. And um, when we go to another slide where we can get onto our website, you if you haven't done so already, you can sign up to get on our listserv so that you can get the reminders as well. Um, but what I would do is I would calendar them and however it is that you're keeping records of where you need to be, these are important because these trainings, uh, not only uh, their camaraderie, just like we're right here today, just all together doing the same thing. We all have our specific unique challenges, but there's ways that we can all um, support each other. And so these trainings are very important and they always have the same link and the meeting ID is always the same. And so once again, you will be able to access the future trainings, not only on our website, but on this uh, presentation as well when I send it. Okay, so keep those in mind. And I just wanted to give a quick overview of what the report actually looks like. If we have time at the end and there are no questions, but we welcome your questions, then we will go into the report and do a step-by-step. -step. I'm not sure how much time we'll have, but we're gonna try. Um, but this is what it looks like. It's basically a Google form and it consists of anywhere between like 11 to 13 questions. And some of them are, uh, most of them are, you will be doing drop downs or you will be writing in a text. And um, so for sure, this is a link that you wanna save because you need to always have it handy. And um, so here's my experience with Google Forms. If I use the same link and I use the same um, computer, if I start working on my project and, um, uh, okay, so we prefer that the report not be done, be submitted after the month is over, right? But let's say you wanna just try to be ahead of time, a little bit prepared. So you have already, um, you know what your successes and your challenges are. So let's say you start on this uh, report. If you walk away and close out of it, based on my experience, you will be able to go back in and it should have saved your answers until you submit. Now, a couple things here. If in fact that does not work out for you, it has worked for me. What you wanna do is throughout the month, keep like a document that says, oh, here's our successes for the month of January. Here's our challenges. That way, you know, you're ready when the reporting time comes and you just have it on a document and God forbid you lose the information and have to start over, you already have it documented. So that's just my little tip of the day. If you have any questions or any troubles submitting anything, any of the deliverables for this report, please contact me at the end of this slide. You will once again have my email and my phone number. Call me, text me, anything. That's happened several times and that's okay. Um, just call me and say, you know, I, I just can't, I, I uploaded last month, but for some reason I can't upload this month. And in the event that that happens, in the unlikely event, what I will request is that you email it to me, to me though, not to Madeline, um, because I, that way I will be expecting it and I could go ahead and file it accordingly. But really, in, in all likelihood, you will not have any issues. Those have been very uh, few. And uh, so please just get with me if you have any questions about the monthly reporting. And I just wanted to go over quickly what kind of questions you'll get. You'll get highlights and celebrations. You'll uh, get a, uh, a portion where you will enter in your challenges. Uh, please be honest on both these um, sections. I have removed the option to put not applicable because I just can't imagine that a month would pass without either a highlight, a celebration, or a challenge. So no matter how big or small, please uh, mention it. And uh, also know that, feel free to be honest. However, um, <clears throat> let's say you have a challenge internally, um, please, if you could just maybe avoid names because this is shared um, with our partners. Um, but so be honest, but just be mindful um, that we will be sharing your successes because we want to show you off and show all the great work you're doing. Um, so just keep those things in mind. Uh, we also will be asking if you had new staff hired, which is many of you, will, please include all the information that is on the form, which you see here on this uh, slide. And then we will be asking about the activities of the Health Equity Committee and the members. We'll be asking you to name the training and then the deliverables will be uploaded. And this is what we're gonna go into now. Okay, so all of the deliverables for this project will be uploaded in the monthly report form, the one that we just looked at. In year one of this project, from fall of last year to summer of this year, the deliverables will be related to vaccine equity and capacity assessment and improvement. 
for your health council. In year two, which is from the summer of 2022 to the summer of 2023, deliverables will be related to community rebuilding. We're just gonna focus right now on the ones for year one. Um, and I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that uh, I wanna give a shout out to uh, Madeline Bremel who helped me very, very much with this uh, presentation. So um, first, one of the deliverables is, uh, or one of the things that you will be asked to upload into your report is the health equity committed related activities. You will do a roster. If you have most health councils, I think we're only lacking maybe five of them. So I'm, you know, most of them have already submitted a roster. If you have any questions about the health equity committee, please ask me. Uh, we will be giving more training on those later, but for now, it's a group of people that um, their interest is to make sure that everyone is included in your health council work. And that is not just the people that live in where the, um, where the county seat resides, that's rural, that's homeless populations, that's elder populations, youth, you name it. We want a group of people that is very interested in including everyone to form your committee. And once you uh, submit that roster with all their contact information, which by the way, we will not be sharing, it is just for reporting purposes, then you will likely only do the roster once unless you have updates. Let's say you get a new member, then you would update that and submit it with your report. Other than that, you will be submitting the monthly minutes from your health equity committee. The committee is required to have a meeting every month if possible. All health councils are different. Some have different capacities, but um, typically every month you can either combine it in your health council meeting, uh, just have a section for health equity committee, and then subtitle it as such, or you can have it after your health council meeting. Whatever works for you, if you have any questions, please reach out to us. The next uh, deliverable will be related to vaccine equity. Um, the majority of health councils, if not all of them, uh, with the exception of a couple, um, have already turned in their action plan that would focus on an event for January, but also include a plan that would go through to the summer. So we're still working on that. Again, reach out to us for more questions. I can't get into too much of it now based on time. Um, but then the last one will be the capacity assessment. Uh, you all have been sent a survey monkey. It's due on the 12th. And so that is going to help you um, figure out where your strengths and weaknesses are and what we can start working on and tr um, targeting our training for to help what the health, to help health councils with what they need at this moment so that we can be uh, ready for year two. Okay, now um, don't let this overwhelm you. This is a wonderful graphic, um, but when you're new, I can understand how it might seem a little overwhelming. So I just want you to focus really on, this is really what we um, ideally had in mind, but again, based on capacity and what each health council can do, um, it, it may not have turned out exactly this way and that's okay. Uh, but you know, I won't go into each one of them because you can see them here, but I do want to point out this. You'll see that um, starting in December, every month you'll be you will have been turning in your minutes um, because you had already established your health equity committee. And then you'll see um, starting from December on, the next bullet point will be related to vaccine activities. Even though they're not worded the same, they're, they're all about the vaccine action plan. And then starting in um, February is where we're going to start. Uh, we're gonna provide you with the tools to um, submit your assessment based on the, sur the survey that you did. And so as you can see, this is kind of the, the idea. We're adding something on every month or so. And then depending on the tier that you are at, you will start having quarterly reports, but we're not there yet. So don't worry about that. Okay. And um, so each month, a, a health, the health councils will attend the monthly trainings. Uh, so this is just a little recap of what we've gone over so far. You'll attend the monthly trainings. You'll complete the monthly report from the Google form and the link that is provided to you at the end of every month. And that will also be on this um, presentation and it's on our website, it's everywhere. Um, so bookmark that link. You will um, be uploading the required documents to the monthly report. That is the ideal way to upload them. We are preferring that you not email them unless you have like some kind of technical issue. Please call me so that I can be expecting that email. Um, but please do not email uh, Madeline any of your deliverables like in your vaccine plans, just because it, it gets a little hard to keep track. Um, all right. And then uh, you will also be turning in all the other items that we mentioned that are related to the vaccine plan and the capacity improvement. And you will be submitting your invoice by the fifth of the following month. I recommend doing the monthly report first and then turning in your invoice. Uh, but those two things, so for example, um, February, it says the fifth, but it depends on whether the fifth falls on a weekend, which is going to happen to us in February. So for February, all of your items are due on the fourth. Okay. 
All right. And so um, <laughs> bear with us with this photo. Um, it, it wasn't intended for you to be able to read it. It was just we wanted to give you a snapshot of what the invoice looks like. Um, and in a minute, we'll go into more depth, but I just wanted, uh, and we're also gonna watch a video, um, but I just wanted to let you know that basically, um, Madeline pre-fills out everything for you. You just have to mostly sign and date. Okay, so I'm gonna go through these um, real quick. So as you can see, this is a much better, uh, you can see really what's going on here. She's gonna put all this in here for you. You're just gonna um, confirm it. Okay, so it's really easy. We have been told that, we have the easiest invoices uh, of all the projects that are going on right now, so yay us. Um, and then also down here, you'll see that the indented parts are the things that you will be turning in with your monthly report. Like for example, you can see in October, November, it was mostly the roster and the minutes. And then as you, as we mentioned earlier, we add something on every month or two. And so here it's the roster if you need to update it, the minutes and then the vaccine plan, part one. Okay, so that, that takes care of that. And then, so this is just a repeat of everything I just said. I'm sorry, I forgot that she put this in here. Um, okay, so yeah, you're just gonna be confirming all these items here. Here is the list of the deliverables. And um, you're gonna make sure that this reflects the right period. So some of you will be invoicing for three months, four months at a time. Um, ideally, it's one month at a time, but we understand that not everyone could um, get on board as quickly as others. And so you're just gonna be confirming this area here where it says beginning to end that she puts down for you. Here you will see that you will receive a flat rate every single month. This rate for year two will be lower because we have more months to spread out the 50,000 that was awarded with the contract. Okay, but for now you don't have to fill this in. She will do it for you. Okay, and so moving right along, here's the bottom part um, that you will be signing and dating. And here is the total amount on the bottom is what you will actually be, be getting the check for. So you, you wanna make sure that this is correct based on the months that you're invoicing for. And so here is where you sign and date. Um, you have several options here. Uh, if you've been doing something and it works, then keep doing it. Um, she mentions here and we'll go over it in the video a little bit more, but there's a variety of ways that you can sign and date your sheet. Um, and we'll go into those more. If you want more information on those, please let us know. Um, what we're suggesting here is free. Okay, so, um, and then last, we're coming to our website. Just It just has a wealth of information. Um, I am gonna take a minute just to get into the website here. I hope my computer um, cooperates with me. Um, I certainly hope you guys can see what I'm seeing. Um, somebody just give me a little shout yes. out. Oh, yes, Susie. Okay. okay, so um, first of all, um, if the page should pop up immediately because that's where the link is. But just so you know, we're under the programs under CDC Health Equity and Community Rebuilding, but this is where it will take you, and it just has so much. Now, it can be overwhelming if you're new, so I'm going to just direct you to the part that I, I just love. So um, here is the training and technical assistance schedule that I was mentioning to you, and it, it, you know, it takes you to different links that show you what trainings are coming up, but if you just remember those two Mondays, you'll be fine. But this right here is just, I love it so much. This is all of Madeline's work and it's a joint effort from our entire team, but she was able to put this in a way that's so easy to understand. I'm gonna strongly recommend that if you're new, um, that you start with the 12-6 vaccine equity plans and data dashboards training. Um, depending on how much time you have, um, you wanna look at the, the minutes uh, to see what happened when. And if you only wanna watch about the da data dashboards, then you can fast forward on these links. Um, so yeah, that just gives you an idea of what we have available for you. Um, and then as time permits, feel free to go back. See here, we had, um, a training on tiers. Now, even though we've had a few changes or adjustments, I should say, the ba basic concepts have remained the same. So you can learn about the tiers, um, here in this training. Um, you can learn here. This is a really good training that goes into a little bit more depth than I'm doing today. It covers things that I did not cover, but I'm also covering things that we did not cover on this 1029 training. Um, there's uh, two sections here. So again, you just want to go and if you only want to learn about the invoicing, then you'll watch that. If you only want to learn about the reporting, then you can fast forward. Uh, again, keep in mind that a few things have been adjusted, but the basic points stay the same. It's vaccine capacity, um, and health equity committees this year, and then health equity committees throughout the entire project, but then community rebuilding for next year. So those are the basics there. So I just really, really love this website. So I'm gonna see if it will take me back. Oops, this always happens. Okay, here we go. Um, so 
let's see, how are we doing on time? Oh, not too bad. Um, okay, so the webpage includes program information, quick links, and many other resources for health councils that are participating in the pro participating in the program. And this is your landing place for everything that you need. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop share for just a second, and then I'm going to pull out the um, amazing uh, sort of training that um, that Madeline did for us. And we're going to watch that and then we're going to open it up to questions. And then if we have time, we're going to go through the monthly report step by step. Okay, so give me one minute to share again. Hello, everybody. I just wanted to walk through a quick video about invoicing procedures and also on how to export Excel documents and Word documents as PDFs using Adobe Acrobat Reader. Um, just to simplify the invoicing and reporting process for everybody, um, if you um, want to use those tools, everything is free. Adobe Acrobat Reader is free and you can sign right in the document there. Um, so if you want to use this, it might simplify your process a little bit. Um, it'll take away the steps of printing and scanning um, and signing and then rescanning and everything like that. Um, so um, I just wanted to show everybody how this worked in case um, you wanted to use it. Um, as you can see, I have up a template invoice here. So this is the same as the template that you would get from me at the end of each month. I'm just going to go over the things that you should check over on your invoice and then the process of downloading it um, to a PDF and signing it. So this is the first thing, your name and address should be at the top of your invoice um, and I'll have pre-filled these, um, but if you just wanna check them over to make sure that they match the W-9 that you submitted to CHI, um, that way we can make sure that your check is going to the right place. You'll also wanna check this invoicing period section. If you're invoicing for one month, the beginning of the period should be at the beginning of the month and the end of the period should be at the end of the month. Um, but if it's the first invoice you're submitting, this might be for multiple months. Our project started on the 18th of October. And so if you're just starting invoicing this month, the beginning here will be October 18th, and then the ending period will be the end of whatever month you're submitting your invoice. And then the next thing you wanna check is this column. This column is the amount that you're going to be paid this period. So if you're invoicing for one month, you should just have money in one box here. If you're invoicing for multiple months, you should have money in each of these boxes. And you'll wanna check that the total at the bottom of this invoice reflects the amount of months that you're being paid for. Um, and that's really important because this box is the amount of money that CHI is going to write your check for. So you really want to make sure that that box is accurate. So once you've checked that all over, everything is good to go. Your invoice is ready to sign. Um, and so I'll then show you how to export this as a PDF and sign it that way. Um, even if you're using a different version of Excel, the steps are the same, even if your screen looks a little bit different. So um, yeah, so just um, realize that. Um, but you'll go up to File, which should be in the top left corner here and then you'll click export and then you pick create pdf it'll probably give you a place that you want to save your pdf this is an old version that i was using before so i'm just going to copy over that but you can pick wherever you want to save it and i do want to replace it okay oh gosh okay Okay, so we're good to go there. Um, so then it's going to pull up um, probably your um, PDF in Adobe already. If it doesn't pull up your PDF in Adobe, you can just go to the folder where you have it saved um, and click on the document. This is it right here. And you can right click on it and choose the program that you want to open it with um, and then pick Adobe Acrobat. Okay, so I already have it open in Adobe Acrobat here, so we're good to go. So then in order to sign your invoice, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click this little like fancy pen icon up in the top here, um, click on that, and it will give you some signature options. If you haven't put a signature in already, it'll give you the option to put a signature in. You can either draw it on your screen or you can type it out or whatever you wanna do, it doesn't matter. Um, but then you can just click on this and drag it down to where you wanna put it on your invoice. So I'm gonna just put it right here. You can resize it then if you want to. Um, 
And then you'll also want to add the date. So you can click on this little text box um, icon in the top here and then type it right in here. Today is the 26th. Nice. Okay, so then it's all done, ready to go. Um, you can save it, um, right, using that little save box up in the top corner. I am just going to, again, save over the document that I created before since I don't need the unsigned version of the invoice anymore. <clears throat> okay, so then it's ready to go. You can then attach that file to an email, whatever you want to do with it. Um, you can see if we go to the folder here and look at the little preview for um, the invoice, you can see that it is now signed. It has my signature on it down there. Um, we thought it might also be helpful to do a quick little overview of how to also convert a Word document to a PDF. Um, just for other reasons, maybe you want to do that for reporting or for something else for the project. So I was just going to show everybody how to do that too. It's pretty much the same as Excel. Um, but I'll just kind of go over that a little bit. So you have a document up here. This is just a random example document. Um, the same as the Excel, you're going to go to File. And then you're going to go down to Export. And then you're going to pick Create PDF. And it'll give you a place to save it. Um, and you can go ahead and do that. Um, and then your PDF is ready to go. Um, and you can, you know, there it is. <laughs> um, and you can send that to um, anybody that you need to send it to. Finally, I just wanted to show everybody how to get Adobe Acrobat Reader um, in case you don't already have it since it's free and it's really easy to use and all the signing, everything that I was just doing, you can do in the free version of um, Adobe Acrobat Reader. Um, the important thing that you're going to want to look for is Reader. Um, Adobe Acrobat does have other paid versions I and mean, you just, you know, you don't need those um, probably, but you can always get this free version that's called Adobe Acrobat Reader. Um, so this is the site you can get it on. I'll put a little link to it um, for the meeting as well. Um, but you'll just go to the site, you click download Acrobat Reader, and it will just download it to your computer. Okay, I think that's all I have. Thanks, everybody. Okay. That was awesome. Madeline did a really good work there. Okay, so um, I'm going to open it up. I, we did really good on time. I, I know it was a race with that presentation, and I apologize. Um, but again, like I'm here to answer questions. And so I, I want to open it up to questions. And then um, if there's time, we will go over the, the actual link, which by the way, I do that in the 1029 training. Although the questions are different, it gives you a general idea of what to expect. All right. So Gerilyn, do we have any questions in the chat or would anybody like to just shout it out? Um, no questions in the chat, Susie. Okay, I see um, a note. Um, oh, okay, Sharon must be answering a question that someone had. Um, but yes, um, so depending on your health council, um, ideally, you're just looking for a diverse um, group of people. They, it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter what sectors they work in. It doesn't matter if they're retired or if they're community members. Um, and it doesn't have to be everyone on your health council. We do, however, it, it's good if they're... Um, focused on making sure that it's all about including everyone and uh, a diverse group is always uh, good for that. Um, okay, so if, if, we, if we don't have any questions, let me see. Okay, Susie, we just had one pop up. Uh, it says uh, from Adrian for the capacity survey, are we serving the committee or the health council? Oh, okay, so the survey is a survey to uh, determine where your strengths and where your opportunities for development lie within your health council. So what you'll do is you'll select a diverse group of your health council that, that knows the health council. So perhaps it might not be the newest person that just started, unless you have a history with your health council. So you want to get, I, I, I think the instructions are on the survey, forgive me, it's, it's, it's a number of people, like maybe three to five, and you want to get them to fill out the survey in an honest way so that we can do a summary and assess where health councils lie and who needs what. And so I hope that that answers your question, but you're not, yeah, you're not asking anyone questions about the, it's, it's about your health council. So thank you for the question, Adrian. Okay, while I'm waiting for other people to uh, put their questions in the chat or speak up, I am going to go back to my presentation and 
um, I will get to the part that has the monthly report. And I cannot reiterate enough that if for whatever reason you have an issue with, um, uh, with submitting something in your report, uh, please get with me and I will help you. And uh, even though, you know, it might be crunch time, uh, it's best to not email Madeline because that can get lost somewhere in the shuffle. And, uh, and then you'll get an email from me saying, hey, I didn't get this. And like, yes, I did. I said it. So it'll just like, you know, alleviate all, all that confusion. Um, so, okay, let me share again. And what I've done is I've actually just pulled up, I, I clicked on the link. I literally, that's the only thing that I did was click on that link. And so here we are. So I'm going to fill out um, a mock report. Okay, so I'm just going to use like a really, um, a really old email that I don't even use anymore, but at least that way it'll show me that I, okay, so I'm just going to pick Acable for the sake of the um, training. Um, and so that was just uh, my email because at the end, you're going to be asked if you want the answers to be sent back to your email. This is the email it will send it to. And you cannot put more than one email. If you try to do that, it's going to kind of mess up. So just do the one email. And um, also, um, definitely remember to select that you do want to copy because let's say you're moving along and you're filling out your report and you're like, oh, I put the wrong minutes in there. I put October's minutes and they should have been November's minutes. So if you want to be able to fix that, which by the way, I don't know if she's on the call, but um, the amazing coordinator that helped me to realize that that was doable is um, Katrin County's new uh, project coordinator, Shania. So thank you, Shania. Um, so yes, you can go in there and with the email that you get, you can, you have an option to edit your report and then you can go in and fix whatever it is that you didn't get quite right. All right. So um you're gonna enter the reporting period. So for here, I'm just gonna put October uh, just for you know argument's sake. And here is a highlight or a celebration that your health council experienced this reporting period. Now this is especially tricky for those of you who are a little bit like trying to do catch up because here you are in January and you're like, oh, guess what happened this month? Okay, just remember you're doing like, just remember that to work within the reporting period that you selected here. So you might have to go back to your calendar, your emails, to refresh your, your memory of like, okay, what did we do? Oh yeah, I'm just gonna use, um, I helped someone yesterday and they had this amazing uh, thing where they had a, an annual fall festival and they were able to partner with another program. And between the two of them, they distributed um, something that was very uh, targeted at what their population needed, but also vaccine information. And so that's a perfect example. We successfully attended a fall festival. We successfully partnered with XYZ. Um, you know, it could even be something as like, we finally hired someone, oh, we've been waiting, or we finally signed our contract, it, whatever. We're just here to celebrate you, and we're very excited. Um, as you see the trainings and the things that we're looking for, then please definitely incorporate anything that you say, oh, we do that, we've been doing that for years, we'll put it in here. So we want to hear about it. Uh, same thing with the challenges. I'm just going to put ABC here just so it will let me move on because you, you are required to answer on these. Um, and so same thing here with the challenges or challenge that you had. Uh, just, you know, be honest, anything that you put here is the purpose is to help support you and help you in any way that we can. So um, I'll just put X, Y, Z here. Um, but I mean, maybe you just can't figure out the link that gets you to sign up for a vaccine event. Maybe you just, you're like, I don't know, I can't work it out. I don't, I don't understand. I tried. It could be that. Um, you know, anything, if you're severely understaffed and it caused X, Y, Z problems, then tell us about it so that we can help you. Okay, so we're going to go on to the next page. Um, all right, so we're at the staffing. Um, if you answer yes to this question, it will take you to this screen where you will put how many you hired for the month reported. Remember, <laughs> the month reported. So you definitely want to get this part right. If you hired in January, you don't want, want to answer yes to this question in October. Okay, so this is pretty self-explanatory. You're going to put the position. If it's a, a new project coordinator, that's great. If it's a new health council coordinator, that's fine. Um, and then you're just going to please make sure you provide all of this information because this is how, if you haven't done so already and been added to our uh, listserv, we will add you this way. And it also helps us to keep our contact list up to date. I'm going to go back though, and I'm going to answer no here just so that we can bypass that. Um, but please uh, answer yes if it if it's appropriate for your health council. 
All right, so here is, does your health council have an established health equity committee? Um, remember, this is the whole point. This is why we got this funding so that we can make sure that everyone in the community, including rural areas, uh, immigrant populations, all the populations that are often overlooked get included. So this is really what this is all about. If you need any further help establishing this committee, please do not hesitate to reach out. Do it today. Um, okay, but so for here, I'm gonna answer yes because the majority of you have already done that. And so when you answer yes, this is what you'll see. It's gonna ask you, and it's, it's as clear as it can be. If you don't think it's clear, please let me know and I will um, look into it. So please attach the Health Equity Committee meeting minutes and roster with committee contact information. Quick note, we do not share that contact information with anyone. Um, we don't shout out to them. We don't call them or anything. It's just for reporting purposes. Notice here what it says. Let me see if I can make this bigger. After the first roster is submitted, you only need to resubmit if there's changes to your roster. Let's say for example, you didn't have an email for someone, but you're like, I know it's somewhere, I just can't find it. And you don't have the time to go digging for it or to look online, like maybe they work at a school or something and you could find it there. So, but you just, you need to get the information in so you'll submit it. But the next month you remember, oh, you know what? My, I need to complete my roster because it wasn't complete. Or you added a member, which is super exciting. Um, so that's when you would, turn in the roster after that. If you don't have any changes, you just do it the one time and you're done. Okay, if your committee did not meet for the reporting month, please attach a dated brief summary of work that has been done by the committee, whether it's by email, phone, chat, text, because let's say everyone at your health council gets ill and you just can't meet, it's closed and you, you just couldn't meet like you wanted to. We also know that we're in a, in a very, um, you know, challenging time right now. So we understand that those things happen. However, I know y'all are still working. You're doing something, you're calling, you're texting, you're, you're whatever. So what I would request, because this, you're required to put something in here. Um, and what I don't want you to do is to go back and answer no to that question, because you have a health equity committee and, and that's the whole purpose of this, you know, one of the main purposes of this uh, project. So you don't want to answer no, so that you don't have to put something in here. What you do want to say is you answer yes, and then you'll upload it brief document that says, you know, it could be bullet points. It's a date. It, it's the name of your health council, everything that will help me to know that it's you. And it says, you know, we didn't meet this month due to whatever. And then you'll just outline, but we did work on these things and you will list the people that did the work because, you know, that's fine. We need to get creative here because we're all in work, going through hard times. So that's what we'll do there. Um, and then it, let's say you do have your meeting minutes and they're all done. They're all in a PDF and you're finished, but you remembered another strategy that came up after or it would just for whatever reason wasn't reflected in the minutes. And you're like, oh, I really want them to know that we really talked about including a rural community in our in our health council. And it's not really reflected the way I want it to be in the minutes. This is where you would put that. Okay. Um, so anything there, if that doesn't apply, then you would put not applicable. And then here you always want to put, why does the health equity committee matter? Why is it making it meaningful for my work? Now, mind you, many of you, if not all of you, have already been doing this work. You've been including other um, people in your community. But if you need development in that area, you want to definitely say how they're helping you develop and be more inclusive and including all the populations that are in your community, in your county. Okay, so let me go on to the next one. Oops, oh, see, it made me want to add a file. Okay, for the sake of our training, if you don't mind, please don't do this, <laughs> but I'm gonna put no so we can move on because I didn't have a document ready, I'm so sorry. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next section and it's on training. And here, uh, this question for those of you who have reported before, we're really, our goal is to um, ease the burden of administrative tasks more for you, but also for us. So we used to have two questions tied to this and now we have turned it into one. And um, we want you to enter the name of any training or trainings that members of your health council attended this period, be it CDC health equity and community rebuilding that take place on the first and third Mondays of each month or any elective training of your choice. Anything that helped your health council. You, if you wanna put this one down, please do so. Um, I, I didn't require the dates, but any information that you could give is helpful to us. Um, but please, the, the point here is just to share with us the trainings that you're going to, um, so that if we see that you missed a certain training that we think would help you in the future, then we can, we can suggest it to you. Um, if we see that one of your challenges, I'm so incredibly overwhelmed, I, I can't even 
do my report on time, and then we see that you're attending trainings that maybe we'll cover later in year two, then maybe we could suggest, oh, okay, so yes, the trainings are good, but maybe you could focus on just the Monday trainings for now, and that'll alleviate some of the time that you have to do your, your other work. So those are just some um, points there. Uh, oops, I have to put an answer in, so I'm just going to put ABC here. Okay. Um, just another note on the training. Um, so let's say you don't remember the exact fancy title, but you know that we covered about the capacity assessments. Then you can put capacity assessment training. That's fine. All right. Oh, yes. uh, wait, Anna had raised her hand. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I can't see it. Go ahead. Okay. Susie, if we watch the trainings after they're completed, because we can't make that time slot, do we put that in there? Yes. Thank you, Anna. Yes. Yes, I forgot to mention that. Um, oh, see, teamwork. Um, yes, if you went back and watched them, then you would put that up. Uh, please, if you don't mind, uh, put, you know, October's invoice training or whatever. So thank you, Adam. All right, wonderful. Um, any other questions for now? No, okay. All right, so the um, next- Susie, oh. sorry, one just popped up. <laughs> <laughs> From Alicia, do we only put down trainings that are through your organization or do we put down any kind of training from um, any other organizations? Anything that helps you at your health council. So um, be it our trainings, the CDC or the alliances trainings, um, or any other elective training of your choice. I mean, if it's DOH training, if um, the MPHA folks gave a training and you really wanted to learn more about like policy, please mention it. We'd like to know. There's another reason why it's important to mention your trainings because let's say y'all are like, let's say the majority of health councils went to a training and we didn't even have it on our radar that that's what you guys needed. Boom, now we know. So all this is so informational, it just helps us, uh, all this data helps us to help you better. Did that answer um, the question? Yeah, Alicia said thank you. Okay, <laughs> hi Alicia. Cool, all right. Um, okay, so gosh, so small. Okay, <clears throat> vaccine equity plan, this is the next section. Um, right here, you're completing this section regarding your vaccine equity plan. Whenever you see things like this, uh, this is something that already has taken place because you can see here December 2021 to January 2022. You'll see in the next slide that it's something that isn't until February. That right there will give you a target of whether it's something that we've already done. This we have done. Uh, again, I cannot stress this enough. Go back and watch the December 6th training. Um, if you have any questions, especially related to data, please reach, reach out to myself and I will connect you to the person that can help you with that, but also reach out to our amazing um, partners of the DOH Health Equity Specialists, um, your promotion team, we're all here to help you. We also, uh, this we'll be mentioning this on the seventh training, but if for whatever reason you wanna use another data source, we just require that it be uh, from the state and that it be a credible uh, source. And so um, if you would just list the source on your plan, we won't go into the plan now that's covered in the 12th six training that you can go back and watch but I just wanted to let you all know that. Okay, so here um, uh, you would answer yes, and I'm gonna have to go back and put no just to so we can move this along. But when you answer yes, as you should be answering, um, this is where we'll say, please upload your vaccine equity plan, which for December was, was part one of the template. If your plan had updates during the reporting period, which is where many of you are now, then you will be um, submitting the uploaded part of plan one or part one, I'm sorry, the updated part of plan one. <laughs> if you started implementing the actions in your plan, then which by now you, you should have, cause you set a plan that you were gonna do in, in January. And so by now there should have been some things that you did. So you will wanna update that. You wanna um, complete part two of the template, which is the description of the progress and accomplishments. Some of you all had started implementing plans in December. Yay you, not everyone did. So the, what we were asking is for you to um, have done, have planned something in, in, for your December reporting for January. So now what you're gonna be doing is updating all that. And that's part two. Okay, so this is where you will, um, I'll just, for those of you who have not done it before, you will click on here and it will um, take you to where you can select your, your document. Um, I don't have anything prepared, 
Um, but you know, you can just go here and select whatever you want. Whoops, now we're going all over the place, I'm sorry. Um, so let me make this smaller. So you would insert it and, and that's how you would upload it. And here you will be uploading um, as many documents as you need. Um, we mostly want the template, but it did come in a, it, it was like together, like in part one and part two were together. So in this case, you'll only be up to uploading the one. In the case of the health equity minutes and roster, there you can put the roster and the minutes um, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm gonna pause for, oh, go ahead. Um, Anna has her hand raised. As we begin to implement our vaccine equity plan and uh, plans change, do we reflect that in uh, our, our plans? If we thought we were gonna do something and then we learn more and we say that's actually not a need that our community has, we don't- that's perfect. That, how do we change those plans as we ask them out? Yes. So remember, we already have the plans that you submitted. So you are welcome to just update them. And that's an excellent question. So what you'll do is you will, um, yeah, you just document everything. You know, we, upon reflecting or finding more data or whatever, we realize that our target population is now this, and this is now what we're going to do, whatever you have. So yes, just reflect it on the new one. And it'll be great because we already have the other one and we'll see like the progression. But yeah, be as um, detailed in your explanation as you can without overburdening yourself. I hope that that makes sense. Thank you, Anna, for that excellent question. Yeah, and that's going to happen a lot, let me tell you, because, um, you know, we kind of did a little goof, uh, you know, we, we tried our best to explain the vaccine equity plan, but somewhere along the way, um, we weren't clear enough and we deeply apologize that the plan really, the idea was to go through to June, um, but we were focused so much on January that I think that's what people walked away from or away with. And so we are really wanting you to go as far as you can <laughs> up until June of this year. Okay, great. Um, so let me go back and I'm just gonna answer no for the sake of this training. And so the next question is health council capacity improvement plan. So notice here, please pay attention to these little notes here that you see because they will give you a hint. So let's say you're new and you're like, I don't even know what this is. Oh my God, I'm so stressed out. I don't have it. Well, you, this is gonna give you a tip here. By February 12th of 2022, each health council should have completed a capacity assessment, which is the survey monkey. However, if you're doing your report and it's February 4th or the 3rd, well, that right there tells you, oh, okay, we're, we're not here yet. We will be the next time. So just so you know, this will be something that you will be paying attention to um, at the end of February up until the 5th of March. Then you will answer yes here and you will uh, proceed accordingly and we will give you training and all the tools that you need. But for right now, this truly is a no, not just for uh, the sake of time, but really this is a no for now because it does not apply. And you have finished. Okay, so Here's where it's really important that you mark, send me a copy of my responses and I'm not gonna submit it cause I don't, I, I it just no need to get a bogus uh, report. <laughs> um, so, but you would just click submit and you will instantly, not only will you get an email of your uh, submission, I'll get an email letting me know that you submitted it and then it, it, it all transfers into this sheet where we keep all the data. It's a beautiful thing. And so um, when you get, remember that when you get your um, email, if you were like, oops, forgot to update a phone number on the roster, then you can go back, you know, you can fix your document, get it ready and go back and put it back in from the email that you get. Okay, so I am going to stop sharing and see if anyone has any questions. Okay, let's see, and... Oh, you're welcome. Okay, let's see. Do we only put down trainings that are through? Oh, the Hungry answered that. Okay, great. Um, yes, so yeah, th th this whole part about reporting celebrations, that really shouldn't be all on you all. Um, make sure that you're bringing this up in your meetings, you know, uh, feel free to, um, you know, I, I believe there's a way that when you get your response, you can convert it into a PDF, or you could just jot like, here are the things, you know, based on the presentation that I get, shared with you, here are the things that we cover. So as you all see celebrations uh, for your telling your entire health council members, tell, tell me, you know, help me to remember what we, what we did, because this shouldn't really, it's, it's a group effort, right? So thank you for mentioning that, Sharon. Um, let's see. 
Okay. Yes, Madeline did an amazing job on this presentation and her <laughs> her recording, which by the way, we're going to be sharing with everyone because, you know, in case other people have questions. All right. I will ask one last thing. Uh, please make sure that um, you don't leave without putting your name and the the county that you represent so that we can make sure to send you all the this training. We will also make it available to everyone, but we especially want to send it to you all so that you can um, get it. And if you have any questions, you can kind of dig a little deeper. Um, so please do that. And then um, I just wanted to, again, I, I don't know if Sharon is available. I didn't certainly plan this and I don't mean to put you on the spot, Sharon, but if you have a few things that you want to add, um, I will say that I'm very happy for all of our um, new people that have come on board. Um, I'm just so excited to have you guys all on board. Well, I just wanted to say how, what a great training it was. It was really easy to follow and clear. And I learned about electronic signatures. I never knew how to do that before. So, um, and I didn't know how to save as a PDF that way. So that was worth the price of admission. So <laughs> thank you for doing these trainings because I think we'll probably learn easier ways to do the invoice as we keep doing it. Um, and if anybody has suggestions about how to make any of this easier, that's the goal. Um, we want you to be able to be equipped to do your work as well as you can and not be burdensome. If you ever come to a training and you find like that really wasn't so helpful, let us know that too, um, because we don't want to waste your time. We want to always do things that matter to you that help make your work easier for you. So we depend on your comments and we'll never be offended if you hate something. <laughs> we just tell us. <laughs> All right, yeah, thanks. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we have thick skins. That's excellent. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, do we have anybody else in the chat? Okay, I'm gonna just take a minute, um, again, in the sake of not wasting anyone's time, but I just wanted to, uh, it's a long list and we will be um, welcoming you all in a more official manner. Um, next week, but I just want to, um, you know, say welcome uh, Shania from Katrin, who is new to this work, Joanne from Chavez County, Sophia from Colfax, um, Shannon from the Community Wellness Council in Valencia, Barry, who was ill, unfortunately, could not make it today. I was so hoping uh, that he could be with us, but he's new with Harding. Uh, we have Alicia from Lincoln County, uh, Denny, um, and Catherine, although they are interims, are they're doing amazing work. Um, so welcome from uh, Los Alamos, uh, Rhonda from Nambe, and Marina from Rio Reba. Some of you all might not be here, um, but that's okay. I'm going to give you a shout out anyway. Lori from Roosevelt, brand new, woo, just started a couple days ago. Um, and Mary Ann from Sandoval County, yay. And um, from Pueblo de San Ildefonso, we've got Thelma, Raylene, Claudia, and I've seen a couple of you on this uh, meeting. I hope you're still here. And uh, welcome Althea from San Juan. Uh, and Ursula, although has been with Otero, she's taking on more responsibility. So excellent, as is Brenda from Quay. So I just wanted to take a minute. I'm so glad I got a second to, to say all that. Um, Cause you guys really, I mean, this is a big deal. This is kind of really important work. And um, not that we're doing it so that we can have a legacy, but you will have a legacy. <laughs> you will be able to tell your grandchildren, your children, your nieces, your cousins, you know, when we were in an unprecedented pandemic, I was really making sure that everyone in our community was getting included and that everyone had access to all the things that prevent us from getting the things that our families need to thrive. So kudos to you all. Oh, I'm getting all worked out. <laughs> okay, so, um, all right, wonderful. We will be saving the chat and we will be sending sending you all, all these materials so you can refer back to them. And um, if anyone has anything else, I'm here. But otherwise, thank you so much for being part of this training. It really means a lot to us. We will keep doing this until we no longer need to do it. Y'all have a good time. Good day today. Bye, everyone. Oh, so many nice comments. Okay, I think we can end it. I don't think we're going to have any more questions. Is that okay? Yeah, great. And uh, the recording button.